Welcome to Music 320 Week 13 Lesson 2 where we're going to look at a few simple jitter examples. So we've talked about the uh, matrix object so let's actually start by um, building a matrix object and let's see. <clears throat> so um, when I'm setting up a JIT dot matrix object you can see when I go to JIT dot something how many options I have for jitter. Um, I'm going to set up a matrix object and I'm going to say that it is um, four planes and that the planes all have characters in them. That's 0 through 255 and that we have <clears throat> a matrix that's, I don't know, 40 by 40. I'm going to have a small matrix. This would be a very small uh, video or uh, a very low resolution video. If you can imagine having a video that is only 40 pixels by 40 pixels. Um, and so um, I, I'm going to bring in another object and this is going to be a jit.p window. And a p window is a patcher window. This is a window that actually appears in your patcher. And it can be resized. And this is a really handy way for seeing your video data. Now you can see that I've got a green cable which shows me that the data coming out of this matrix is going to be matrix data. So what does the, the JIT.matrix object do? Well essentially the way to think about it is internally it is able to store a 40 by 40 by 4 matrix of characters and that when that data comes in it's stored in that array, that multi-dimensional array, and then passes that array out um, to the receiving matrix object, in this case the P window. Um, I can also have regular windows, maybe I'll make one of those, a jit.window, uh, and normally I give this a name, let's call this uh, Johnny. Right. And when I do that, a window appears, a floating window, and I'm going to put Johnny up there in the corner. And I can specify the dimensions of Johnny and all kinds of things, and there are lots of attributes I can add, and um, you can look at all that in the help files. But somewhere I've got a window, and if I want things to appear in that window, I pass them into this um, jitter object. All right? Another object that's very commonly used in jitter is the Q metro. This is not a jit dot something, but it is a Q metro. And the Q metro is a lower priority metro object that's specifically designed to work with the jitter world. Uh, you don't have to use it, but it's better if you're if you're using um, if you're using jitter to use the Q metro. And I'm setting it at a very fast um, rate. Now the way matrices work, and especially if you're dealing with incoming video, is that they have a frame rate and you want to refresh things as often as possible. If you start refreshing things at a slower rate than the frame rate, the normal frame rate of about 30 times a second, then you start to get glitchy video. So the idea is you run your Q Metro fast, 10 milliseconds is pretty fast, um, and that way you ensure that you're updating it at least once every frame. Okay, if, if you had it at about uh, a Q Metro running at 30, that would be about 30 frames a second. So this is faster than the normal frame rate of video. All right, and we can just turn that on the way we would turn on a normal met Metro. Now the reason I do this is because there are lots of objects in the jitter world that need to be banged. Right? Um, if you think about video as a sequence of frames um, or an image, um, you, you need to pass it repeatedly down the video chain um, or you just get a still image. So we're often um, banging jitter objects so that its current matrix gets pushed down the cable to the receiving object. All right, so I've got a jitter matrix and I've got, um, this is just black, there's nothing in it, I haven't put anything in it yet. 
but let's um, let's do another object. Let's use the <clears throat> excuse me the jit dot grab object, which is designed to grab a screen uh, from a camera rather uh, a camera grab. So let's put a let's put a little p window here. I just want to. Uh, just experiment a little bit with different some different uh, jitter objects. So there's my P window and I'm going to take the output from my grab and I'm going to put it into the P window so we can see what it looks like. <clears throat> now I need to send the message open to grab my camera and the message close to close my camera. Once I um, open my camera, it will basically turn my camera on and is then capable of getting the images from my camera. Um, <clears throat> now if I just open it like this, I can actually see that my camera is turned on, but you can't because you can't see my camera. Um, but nothing is happening. And nothing is happening because I'm not banging the grab object. But as soon as I do this, and send a message over and bang the grab object and open the camera, turn my metro on, then you can see a miniature a miniature version of me right, uh, in my room, my office. Okay, so you can see how that works and if we turn the metro off and I'm moving my head and I turn the metro off, you can see that it gets frozen. It gets frozen because I'm no longer banging the grab object. And you'll find this with lots of um, objects in Max MSP where you have to um, you you have to go in and repeatedly send a bang message to them so they'll spill out their matrix to the next object. All right. So now this resolution coming out of the grab object is actually pretty high resolution because it's your standard camera. Um, we could probably find out what dimensions the, the matrix is if we wanted to. But let's see what happens if I put it into this matrix. Notice the green cable uh, connecting up the two. Now, what I'm essentially doing here is I'm taking a high resolution image that is a four plane matrix that is probably 640 by 480. And I'm putting into a matrix which only is, it has a dimension of 40 by 40. And maybe we should make it, uh, make it 60 by 40 just to keep the, the dimensions the same. You know, this, the relative dimensions the same. And this, I'll see what happens when I do this. I'll turn my metro back on. And there you can see, I don't know if you can see, I'll make it a little bit bigger, uh, a massively pixelated version of myself in full color. Um, but uh, because I'm putting it into a matrix that only has room for 60 by 40, essentially every pixel is being replicated um, and stretched out to become a pixelated image. So that's how you create these pixelated images that we all see. Okay, so I'm going to, if I want to make it even more pixelated, I could change the matrix and make it a uh, 20 by uh, 18 matrix. And then you see this kind of image, right? And there you can actually see that what we were looking at before, that whole sort of RGB uh, situation where you've got um, each pixel is being filled with an alpha, a red, a green, and a blue value. Okay, so let's take that out. Um, I could also bring in a movie um, and why don't I disconnect this? I'll close my camera. I don't need it on right now. Um, and let's bring in a movie. Now you can actually just bring movies in um, using the video um, option on, on, the, on the left side of your Max window. And these are all the videos that sort of come with Max and I'll take the sunflower video, and when I drag the sunflower video in, I have to be in edit mode to do it. I'll try that again. 
uh, when I bring the sunflower video in, it creates a playlist. This is almost exactly the same as, uh, as what happens when you bring an audio file in. It creates a playlist. The playlist has a, has a loop function on it, so you can have looping turned on, so it you know loops. Uh, and it sort of has its built-in metronome running, so it will constantly put out new values. So if I now connect up this to this, um, but by the way, while I mention it, you have to be very careful about putting two matrices into the same um, receiver, because unlike audio, which adds them together, um, matrices are not added together and they will end up kind of um, kind of fighting for each other to try to see who actually gets to display itself. So uh, you can mix. There's a JIT.crossfade object that you can use to mix, but you, um, you have to be careful about um, just sticking two matrices into the same window for display or processing. Okay, so let's uh, play this and you'll see, ah, that I have now a high resolution image and this is a bee crawling on a sunflower. You can see it running when it gets to the end because I turned loop on, it will loop and continue again and I can stop it. I'll show you what happens if I do this. Uh, you see them <clears throat> jumping back and forth because the two matrices are fighting each other. So we don't want to do that. Um, to say we can use something like a crossfade. Uh, let's do that. JIT dot X fade. Um, and the way the X fade works is one video goes in there, one video goes in there. And then we put a crossfade amount in. I remember how this works. Um, let me just look at the help file because I don't remember how it works. It's an X fade message. And let's put the float in again. And now we see that I've got a mixture of the sunflower image and my image. And if I increase the resolution of this to something a little more reasonable, like let's go with, I'll go with 320 by 240 for this matrix. Now I get, you can see both of those images. Um, well, should be between zero and one. So you can see some of me, it looks like the bees crawling on me. It's not very happy, it make me very happy. Um, as we cross fade the two images. That's actually a still image because I don't have my a camera open. To open my camera, make sure the metronome is on, and then we have a crossfade of me and the bee. Oh, happy times. Okay, um, so uh, you can see you could build these objects, put them together fairly easily. Um, let's do one more object and then we'll, we'll um, stop after that. I uh, don't need the crossfade. Let's use a uh, jit.bracosa um, object. And this is um, brightness, contrast, BR is brightness, CR, CO is contrast, and SA is saturation. So uh, this is an object that we can, I guess, why don't we just, why don't we just go, I want to do that. We'll go out of this into the Precosa object and turn off my metronome. Uh, and out of the Precosa object into this video. Actually, 
Yeah, I'll go into this video. It's going to go into the window as well. Okay. And so uh, the settings for the Brocosa are basically going to be values for brightness, um, contrast, and saturation. So maybe the easiest way to do this is to bring up the um, ATT, the attribute user interface object, and attach that in here. so that we can say, oh, there's the brightness value, and the brightness is 1, and now the brightness is greater than 1, and now the brightness is darker. So we can adjust those values, and we can do the same thing with contrast uh, and with um, saturation. Let's look at the saturation. We'll make, it, we'll make a sort of color saturation. So there's saturation, and we will go down. And you can see how the image is changing uh, we can oversaturate it and, <laughs> and move it down. Uh, generally, the value range is between 0 and uh, 1, but you can go below and above to oversaturate and so on. So you can, now you can start to see that um, these can all be done interactively with sliders. And once you can do things with sliders, then you could start doing things with uh, sound. So why don't we do that? Let's take a microphone object, um, an EZ ADC in here, tilde. So there's my microphone input. And I can run an object like a peak amplitude object, a peak amplitude tilde to track my incoming amplitude, or I can use, I can just use a meter object if I want to. That's a sort of quick way of doing it. But let's do it properly with a peak amp tilde, and we'll give it a, a refresh time of 25 milliseconds. What that essentially means is that I'm going to get a peak amplitude from my microphone every 25 seconds. And of course, I have a live dot gain in here as well. And I can uh, bring that up just to make sure that I'm getting signals in here. And the peak amplitude is going to give me a floating point value, which really is the volume. It really reflects exactly what you see in the meter. When I'm loud, it gets up around 0.1. When it's when I'm absolutely quiet, it's down with near, near, near zero. So <clears throat> I'm going to attach that to a scale object. Now, a scale object is one of the most useful objects there, there are. Um, and it allows you to take into an incoming range and map it to an outgoing range. So because we see that our incoming range here of volume is between zero and about 0.2, we can say, let's go from 0 to 0 0.2, and then we can map it to a saturation value. So let's say that when there's no sound, uh, we want the saturation, let me just, um, to be whoops, around um, 0. Point, let's say, yeah, 0. Point, two. And then when there is volume, we want it to go up to one. So let me go back here and put those values in. So we're going to map that zero a point two to one point zero. All right, I'm just going to go through that one more time with the scale object. Um, so the incoming range is 0 to 0 0.2, and the outgoing range is 0 0.2 to 1. So when I have a value of 0, it becomes 0 0.2. When I have a value of 0 0.2, it becomes 1. And a value of 0 0.5, or sorry, 0 0.1 coming in would end up being about 0 0.7 going out. All right? So let's, um, let's put this into here. So we've made a very simple responsive system. So what's happening now is you can see that the um, picture is flashing because 
as my voice gets loud, it gets brighter. So, you know, very, very simple um, patch where you can already see that we can connect up sound to image um, easily. So I'm going to turn and we could go back in here and we could mix myself back in and so on. So I'm going to turn. So, so that's a, um, a simple example of some jitter objects. Um, the jit.grab object for taking the camera, the jit.matrix object, which creates a matrix, uh, which, which you can be used to store data, um, the jit.crossfade object, which can be used to mix multiple jitter matrices together, the jit.bracosa object, which changes the color. There's, there's many, many, many of these objects. And the help files, again, are really useful, very thorough, and you can get a lot of information from them. Um, just maybe poor Johnny sitting up in the corner there, um, and we should send the message, the, the um, we should send the picture to Johnny as well. And if we were to, if we wanted to, we could turn this into a full page um, uh, display. We could fill the entire window with the B being processed by my voice. Okay, so that's a quick look at some of the common jitter objects. There's so many of them and so many things you can do that I just wanted to go through a few of them. Uh, in the next tutorial, we will start looking at some of the Visi objects and looking at ways that you can bring those together to make jitter projects. Thank you.